You thought I meant piss. No, I meant water. It's actually not too bad. Hey guys, I'm always pleased when ITAD releases new devices, especially from the Zigbee product line. Why? Because, well, I don't have to do extra work to integrate them with a different and then uh, Evolink ecosystems is just pretty much plug and play. And they are always well supported, relatively inexpensive and easy to use and reliable. So when a couple of months ago they released this sensor with a nice LCD screen that lasts a couple of months and um, it's perfect for indoor use, I was kind of anticipating them to release something, well, an equivalent for the use outside. So the release of SNZB02WD isn't much of a surprise, it's pretty much this, but packaged for the use in a harsher conditions. I didn't expect them to release this, which is uh, SNZB02LD. It has external probe. So let's talk about them and see what they are good for and how we can take advantage of them. Both sensor costs just shy of $18, which I think is reasonably priced for a device that comes with a battery. LCD screen is able to accurately measure the temperature, the, re uh, the resolution or accuracy of that is 0.2 degree, which is plenty, uh, and humidity. So the WD sensor in particular, like I said, it comes with a display. You can display uh, units in Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on your preference. Uh, it lasts on a single battery up to two years. This is because it's a beefy battery, the CR2744, if I remember correctly. Yes, I remembered it correctly. And since it's nicely enclosed, it is able to withstand temperatures from minus 20 to plus 60. So that covers the UK perfectly, except for my conservatory, which one time had a temperature of 70 degrees during the heat wave. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what you get when you've got a glass conservatory. Well, I no longer have one. Anyway, I digress. The second one has exactly the same price, but you get a probe with it. Now there is a small trade-off because you only get the temperature from the probe itself, which means you're gonna get a temperature but not humidity values. You might not care about it, but it would be nice for some of to include exactly the same hardware inside and provide you with a reference value so you could get temperature for where the sensors are entered and for where the probe is sticked into. That would be super cool. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. You've got the LCD display, you have the same battery life, so it's uh, two years. And both Zigbee 3.0 sensors, they offer frequency updates uh, every five seconds, which is super nice to see. But where this probe excels is the fact that it supports the temperature ranges from minus 40 to plus 115. That's nice. As these are Zigbee products, you can use any of the Ewilinks offerings. So you can use the oldest one, which is uh, the Pro, Bridge Pro. You can go for iHost as well if you have one, or the latest one, which was the U, which supports uh, Matter. Any of them will work with those temperature sensors. I have no doubt about it. Just uh, I'm gonna link them in the description if you want to start your Zigbee series with Ewilink. And to be fair, I could end the video in here because, well, let's face it, the devices on its own don't offer really anything exciting they just provide you with a temperature and humidity. However, however, I decided to have a little bit of fun with the probe since uh, it's rated for high temperature and I wanted to make sure that high temperature spikes wouldn't be log logged in Ewilink anyway. And I'll show you how to actually get the graphs that I will register as those things and you'll be able to, you know, save that data so you could use it for like heating examples, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But first we need to move to kitchen. Since there isn't anything interesting I can do with the sensor, uh, it's just going to show you temperature and that's it. I thought I'm going to mess about uh, with its resistance to temperature and no, I'm not going to boil it. I'm going to put the probe into a boiling kettle and see if actually it works and brings the water to a specific temperature. That should be quite interesting. So uh, let me find my stand, which I had it. Just, ah, there it is. We need some water. Cold. Right, let's wait for the temperature to settle. Uh, right now it's 18.5 uh, on both. It's 16, it's getting lower in here. Uh, and we're gonna boil some water, I guess. And this science experiment is gonna prove my point because the Ewilink and the historical data, it's, uh, it's probably gonna miss all of that. So uh, let's, uh, let's try that. Uh, so it's about 10 degrees, let's go for it. Come on. Oh, 
it's not going to go to 100. Damn it. The second thing I wanted to show you is this. This is typical English basin with two separate tabs. And I don't know why or how they're surviving. It's unfortunately getting more common to get them uh, connected. But you either get freezing cold or scalding water on your fingers. And now I have a device to test, so uh, let's let's give it a go. Uh, will I be able to put the sensor in any sensible manner? Yes. Okay, so just gonna run the cold water and the hot water, and you're supposed to wash your hands in it. You're either doing it at 10 degrees, or if you want to burn your hand, then you have option to do that as well. So yeah, we have it peaked at uh, almost 55 degrees. You can call me a city if you want, but honestly, 10 degree water isn't pleasant on your skin and the 55 degree water isn't either. So like I'm, I'm replacing all my basins with mixed taps because why not? Anyway, I promised you that I'm going to show you how to take advantage of the frequent readings and we're going to replicate exactly the same thing in Nodret and Zigbee to MQTT. Why? Well, because we can and I already have a coordinator hooked up. You can either get uh, um, a Zigbee um, a bridge from Sonoff, which is flashed with Tasmota. You can either go this way. You can use the Zigbee dongle from Sonoff as well. But I'm going to go with the SM uh, light coordinator because it's already connected to my home automation. So um, yeah, let's go with that. Now, by the time you're going to get your sensors, um, they're going to be supported by Zigbee to MQTT. So I don't expect you to have the need of manipulating converters. But for me to make it work, I have to find a converter for this, which was in devices settings JS, and then. Uh, make it work for me by adding the model numbers to the same coordinator. They're basically the same devices really on the inside. So once I've added this and restarted my Zigbee to MQTT, I started to receive the values from um, the new sensors. Um, I'm going to focus only on the temperature because it's, it comes in pairs. But since I want to boil my kettle once again and show you how you can log that data and keep it inside of your home uh, automation sensor, the easiest way to display it is just to link the chart node in Node-RED and that's it, the job is really done. But that's not going to be a permanent solution to keep that data for longer. You can keep it for pretty long depending on your server settings, but if you want to keep it for longer, I strongly recommend you to take a look at my Grafana and InfluxDB uh, write-up so you'll understand how to uh, take advantage of the database. I already covered that, so I'm gonna link it in a um, corner of this video and I'll give you an idea how to preserve that data and how to have a real uh, access to the history. You'll find yourself that five seconds, it might be even too frequent and you want to trim that down. Overall, if you're looking for sensors that can go outside, they are pretty good and uh, I'm ha quite happy with the performance of them. They offer great battery life. You can stick them in your garden, you can stick them in a pool and start to monitor extreme temperature. As long as you don't try to boil your sensor, you'll be just fine. So if you're interested in these, so if you're interested in these, just head to the description of this video. You're gonna find the links for all the products I've used in this video. So I hope that's going to help you out. As for now, shout out to ITED for sending me this. I could actually take a quick look on them. I still have one device hidden somewhere and probably under the desk right now because uh, I've kicked everything from, from the table to make a video. And that's going to be dropping very soon. I'm super excited about this one. So stay tuned. You know how YouTube works. I'm not going to tell you anything like subscribe and stuff like that. You know how to do this. A couple of social media down, uh, links down below. So consider following me there. And as for now, see you around. Bye.